Hey guys, it is October 9th. Thought I'd show you a day in the life, including what I eat on a moderate day today, and my lift, which I'm doing pull. I've transitioned into phase three of my reverse, so food has gone up since my last video. So I'll show you what I'm eating and then the totals for the day so you can get an idea of how I increased from phase two of my reverse to phase three and being on a moderate day, which is most of my days. So Macro is currently eating my sleeve. So every morning I have coffee. I have been getting like flavors from Target. Target has like the best flavored coffee ever. And they have all these awesome fall flavors. Not pumpkin spice, cause I'm over that. But like buttery rum, cinnamon vanilla. This morning I used caramel macchiato. So good. So currently making coffee half calf because I've been having that issue with caffeine I told you about. So I'm trying to back off the caffeine. I've switched my coffee to half calf in the morning and then I wait until I have pre-workout and then maybe one more energy drink later in the day and I try to keep it around like 150 milligrams of caffeine max. So my goal based on what my coach said, is 300 milligrams a day, which I know I'm still not quite down to yet, but I will say that's probably a third of what I was having. So this is half of what I was having. I know that's concerning. Once you say it out loud, you realize that you're an addict, but the first step is admitting that you're an addict. So we're improving. In my coffee, I've been putting almond milk. I use almond milk from Costco. Um, I use a little bit of sugar-free syrup, like three or four pumps. And then I've been using, I take a collagen supplement every day, so I've been using this collagen in my coffee to make it a little bit more delicious. And I have 10 grams a day, so what I'll do is, I usually have about three cups of coffee. It's still an improvement. So I'll just measure out three grams per cup to get my 10 grams. And then I've also been adding this from Coffee Over Cardio. It's just really for flavor. It is um, a electrolyte supplement. So like, don't go nuts if you're already getting too many of these things. But, it is a good flavor. It's salted caramel. Liv Roth, Liv Rothenberg, she hates this. She says it tastes like salt. But I'm a salt addict, so it's delicious. So I'll usually put my syrup in my almond milk in here, heat it up, and then pour the coffee in here and add these two. I'm gonna do that now, and then I'll show you what I eat for breakfast. So this first meal puts me at 52 carbs, 14 fat, and 39 protein, which is 500 calories, and that is including the almond milk that I have in my coffee, which I kind of estimated because I have about the same amount every day. So assuming I have 12 ounces in a day max, that's what breakfast would be considered in terms of macros. So I'm going to eat this now, and then I'm going to head to the gym. I'll show you the rest of my day. At the gym now, about to work out, doing pull today. I just trained someone and I'm making my pre-workout. I've got 60 grams of cream of rice, 25 grams of protein from whey, and I'm gonna have my pre-workout, which is the HD Black. Really pumped. 
and it's gonna be a good workout. Gonna try to beat my weights from last week. So I'll show you what I got last week versus this week and show you the full workout. I'm gonna eat this now. So I'm starting this pool day with some mobility work. I like these over-unders or shoulder dislocators to really open up the chest and get some blood flow into the shoulders prior to either push or pull days. Um, the key is you want to keep your shoulder blades down and not shrug through the movement. Then I'm moving on to a band rear delt fly. It's okay for your shoulder blades to come together a bit, but you really want your rear delts to be driving the movement. Next, I'm moving on to machine crunches. With these, I'm really working to contract both my upper and lower abs by driving up with my legs. What's key is you don't want to use your hip flexors with this, so you really want to feel that rounding in your spine. Ab movements are the only movements in which you're really going to want to round your spine because that is the function of the abs. You don't want to come straight down and fold like a book. You want to think about rolling down. Next I'm moving on to this leg raise ab slide machine. I'm not sure what it's called exactly. The key with this as well is you don't want to use your hip flexors. You don't want to overarch your back at the bottom because you'll start to gain momentum and it just becomes this swinging movement where most of the stress is put on your hip flexors. I like to keep my abs contracted throughout the entire motion and think about coming to a stop at the bottom so I never build up that momentum. I also kind of crunch up at the top to really contract my abs fully. All right, we're starting this workout with our first exercise, which is adductors. Here you can see my heaviest set. The way that I structure my workouts at this point in my training is I'll build up with some feeder sets, not going to failure on any of them. And then I'll hit my top set for as many as possible going to failure. And with this exercise, you can even see me working past failure by adding in a few forced reps and with controlled eccentrics. So you can still build muscle by assisting yourself through the contraction and then using the muscle fully to control the eccentric. So you can see here I use my hands to push it together and then I'm using my adductors to slow down the eccentric portion of the movement just to force in a few more reps and increase the overall workload. And my goal next workout would be to increase my total reps. So we just started pull day with some adductors. And the reason that we do that on this pull day is in order to warm up the adductors, stabilize the legs a little bit because we do have RDL today. I also have adductor weakness that contributed to my hamstring issue on my right side. So having been doing adductors once or twice a week, heavy like this, with um, assisted reps to really control the eccentric, has really, really helped with my hamstring, and it translates well into my RDL. So I have my intra-workout carbs here, which I use to help shuttle nutrients into the muscle and begin the repair process, even while I'm mid-workout. And I'm moving on here to pronated lat pulldowns. Pronated is pretty much just a fancy word that means overhand. I lean back a bit, not arching my back, just leaning back, contracting my abs to hold the position. Then I drive down and back towards my back pockets. Really avoiding any kind of swinging slash momentum movement here. I want to keep the tension in my lats throughout the movement and not use my body weight to move the weight.
so one interesting movement I'm adding on this pull day, which is unusual for me, I have added in barbell RDLs as a pull movement. So this is technically it is a back movement because your lats are engaged to hold the bar close to your body and you are working your spinal erectors as you hyperextend your back. Um, so this is a movement that is frequently done on leg days due to the hamstring involvement, but I've added it on my pool day to get a little bit of extra hamstring work and to help manage my hamstring injury by building up strength in the area. So with these, you do want to keep a slight bent knee and range of motion is going to depend a bit on your stability and on your mobility within your hamstrings. So I use this platform that allows me to go a little bit lower. So this is a movement that's technically called a hip hinge. And with that, you want to drive your hips back as you descend. This allows you to engage your hamstrings and glutes more, as well as keeping the bar closer to your body, which takes stress off your low back. Using a belt is a good idea when you get to your heavier sets to help with the bracing. You can see as my back starts to round, that's when I end the movement because I know that my limiting factor is no longer my hamstrings, it's my low back. There's mixed reviews as to whether or not you should keep a neutral spine on this. And by that, I mean whether or not you should allow your head to rise as you descend. Personally, I feel like keeping my head up allows me to keep my low back a little bit more arched as opposed to rounding. So this is something to play around with and possibly record your form and see which category you fall into. You can certainly perform this with a neutral spine and as long as you're able to keep your low back from rounding, that's perfectly fine. So play around with the movement, record it to see your form and do what feels best for you. The main thing is to keep your low back safe. The next movement I move into is a semi supinated seated pull downs. I've always loved the feel of a pull down while seated on the floor. The only limitation of this is as you get to heavier weights, it begins to pull you off the ground. So unless you can really lock your feet into something, you can start to be limited by that. Luckily on this week, I was not lifting a heavy enough weight to be pulled off the ground too significantly. But as I progress with this movement, I'll probably have to transition into a traditional lat pull down where my knees can lock in the machine. So I'm not pulled off the ground. With these, I don't like to extend fully at the top. You can see I keep a slight bend in my arms, and that's in order to keep my lats engaged throughout the entirety of the movement. I'm also pulling in front of me and tucking in in order to engage my lats. If I were to lean back and drive straight back, it would have a little bit more trap involvement, which is something that I tend to avoid because my traps take over pretty naturally. So pulling down in front of your body is actually a great way to target your full lats, especially your low lats, which can be particularly hard to engage. Next, I'm moving into a neutral grip hammer row. This has forever been one of my favorite machines. I will say it is much more upper back dominant but it's such a great way to target your traps. Depending on the grip, you can target your rear delts more by going pronated. You can also perform this one arm, which is another great way to do it. And you can actually hit your lats a little bit better if you do it one arm with a certain form, which I will show you in another video. But for now, I'm hitting my upper back. And again, with a heavy top set and a back down set. I'm transitioning into one arm dumbbell rows. Now I'm doing these because Olivia Rothenberg recommended that I do these to target my lats a little bit more, which is something that I really struggled to engage. So I'm keeping things pretty light here and just focusing on a scooping movement back towards my hip 
which is the best way to engage the lats. If I were to drive my elbows straight back, again, I would be hitting the traps a little bit more. By scooping in more of an arch form towards my hip, I'm driving back with my lats. Now I'm doing a one arm rear delt row with a cable. So with this exercise, you want to drive your elbow high and try not to contract your shoulder blades with your traps. So with shoulder blade retraction where your shoulder blades are going to come together, you're going to be engaging your traps quite a bit, which is the main mistake people make when they try to target their rear delts. So you can see me kind of reach back and touch my rear delt to make sure it's activating. But by rounding my back a bit and just driving back pretty much just to my shoulder, I get the most rear delt engagement. And lastly, I'm moving on to a rear delt fly. With these, it's the same concept. You want to round your shoulder blades and drive back with your elbows pretty much just parallel with your body. That'll get the most rear delt engagement with minimal trap involvement. Again, it's okay if your shoulder blades come together a bit, but you don't want your traps to be the primary drivers of the movement. There are many different ways to perform this that allow you to bias your rear delts more. So I encourage you to play around with it, different grips, different angles of your back even standing and leaning into the pad to see what allows you to connect with your rear delts most effectively. Just finished training and 20 minutes of cardio and I feel judged. <clears throat> Having three emus with garlic salt on them, which is fire, and then 115 grams of fish. I will announce my OnlyFans in the next video. Stay tuned. Officially home from work. Got to have a little office party this afternoon, which was really nice just to get to hang out with everyone outside of working with them. Um, but we keep a really good environment at the gym anyways. It's a good community. So it's always fun to just sit back and talk and kind of catch up. While I was gone, I was cooking flank steak in the sous vide and I just threw in some fish. They could get the same temperature, but the fish is a lot shorter. So you don't want to leave it in there all day, even though it won't overcook per se. It tends to affect the texture if you leave it in there for like way longer than you're supposed to. So home with Travis, Travis, Trav. So we're gonna hang out, spend some time together. I'll show you what I eat the rest of the night. And then that's about it for today. Nothing more exciting. The last meal I had was actually the same as the one you saw at the gym, which was 140 grams of mahi with 10 grams of olive oil and some zucchini and kimchi. And then now I'm gonna combine my last two meals since it's like 8.30 and I'd like it to digest a little bit before I go to bed. So I have salmon, avocado, and some veggies and rice. And then I'm gonna combine that with my egg whites. So I'll show you that when it's done. 